So let's review where we've left off with our DIY search engine. First, you go to the website, you type in a search, and then PHP on the back end will then query our results and select certain keywords from our database. It will then take those results and then PHP will then generate viewable HTML for the user to see. On our back end, we have a web crawler which adds websites and information about the websites to our database. And this is written in Python. Now, right now, our search engine only uses keywords and engines like Google or Bing rely on much more, if not completely, on other methods of ranking websites, such as freshness of search results, broadness of search term, popularity and trustworthiness of a website, and the type of infor information you're searching for, all in one search query. Now this obviously will give you much better search results, but that's a lot to add to our search engine. So let's just add, let's say one more to our search engine and we'll add popularity. But I guess the question now is, how do we determine a website's popularity? Now, coincidentally, while skimming my linear algebra textbook from one of my classes, I came across something that might actually be a little useful. It says that search engines available for information searches and retrieval on the internet use matrices to keep track of which websites link to one another. A large measure of the effectiveness of the search engine Google is the matter in which matrices are used to determine which sites are referenced by other sites. So what the book is referring to is something called a connectivity matrix, which keeps track of which websites link to one another. And this is actually very useful in determining how popular a certain website is. Now the method specifically described in the textbook uses something called a sparse binary array, which it's a little bit awkward to work with with our current database setup, so I'm going to most likely use something quite a bit less efficient, but easier to understand and implement. Now, the way a sparse binary array works is like this. If you visualize a nice two-dimensional table with websites listed on the left and websites left listed on the top, you can then write a one when one website connects to the other. The method I'm going to be using is basically just a two column table where the left column indicates which website you're coming from and then the website it's linking to. And so we end up with a table of essentially a list of connections from websites from one to the other. So if I wanted to determine a site's popularity based on how many other unique websites link to it, then I can just count how many times that website is listed on the right column. And if I wanted to find out which website referenced it, I can just look on the left column and see which website referenced it. So let's implement it. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our code. So in our main web crawler script in Python, we just really need to add this slight modification here. So we're going to loop through all of the links that appear in our URL. This is in our main URL queue loop here. So then we're going to be looping through all of the links that appear on that certain website. And then we're going to be creating this string here called con here for connection. And it's going to consist of the current URL and the link that appears on the website. We then add all of this to our, our connections.txt file. And we do this for every URL that we come across. And so if we run this, we get a page that kind of looks like this. We get a list of URLs that we have the base website here and then the website it links to. So such as on policies.google.com, we have a link to google.com. Now, all we need to do is just actually send this to our SQL database. So if we look at our database here, I have a new table called connections and this consists of two columns, our from URL and two URL columns, both of type text. And with a slight modification to our um, SQL upload script here. All we're really doing is just connecting to the SQL database and then inserting all of our connections from our connections.txt file. Once we've done that, we can go back to our SQL database and view all of our connections here in our database. Now that this is all set up, we actually have one thing left to do. We actually need to utilize this new information that we added. 
So here is our PHP script that happens on the back end and is called every time we make a search query. So previously what we would just do is just have our initial SQL query which just matches the keywords and then returns all of the results and then displays them in what order ever they come in, basically being the order in which they were inserted into our database or the order they were web crawled in. But we don't want to do that anymore. So we're going to be creating a second SQL query here which is going to take in the uh, URL from our results list and then count how many times it appears on the right column of our connections database. So remember that actually kind of determines a website's popularity as it will tell you how many different unique websites link to it. So we take that number and we query it in our other connections table. We then can store that as I'm just using a C here for connections, and then we add it to our array here. We then go ahead and sort this, so making all of the ones with a higher number at the top, and then just display the results in the same way we did before, except the difference being now that our top results um, are results that have the most number of references in our connections database. So now with all of this implemented, let's go ahead and test it out. So here's our search page and let's type in Google. Yes, we're searching Google on our search engine. We're gonna go ahead and hit enter. And here we have our search results. So here we have, of course, google.com at the top. We then have some policies, developers, uh, sign in. Now let's try something else. So I'm just going to go, go ahead and type in the word face. So this should come up with something like Facebook because it's referenced quite a lot by a bunch of different other websites. And so as we can see, we have Facebook appearing at the top as well as a few different uh, languages um, that it appears in as well. So we can see that the actual results that we want appear at the top, the websites that appear the most popular. We can try this with another one, such as something like Instagram, and I'll just intentionally not spell out the full name. Now, Instagram does appear at the top. It doesn't look like our uh, title grabber here worked really well, so it says page not found. Of course, it is the correct link to the website that we could click on. We also have Facebook too, which makes sense because Facebook does own Instagram. So it looks like our search engine is actually working quite a lot better. Now, our search engine kind of looks a bit bland at the moment. Maybe kind of like how Google did look back in the early days. But with a nice little bit of CSS and some more HTML, I can come up with something a little bit cleaner looking. So if we go on my actual website here, link in the description, and we can go down to our search engine project page, and we can go ahead and actually open up a demo of this working. And here we have our search engine. It's the same thing as before, just looks a bit nicer. So we can go ahead and type in the same search results. So we can type in something like Insta and hit search. And here we have, again, the same problem showing up, but now we have a nice cleaner view here. And, and this actually uses a different database that doesn't have quite as many links as the first one. So I should web crawl a bit more here because Facebook isn't even showing up, but that's okay. The underlying technology is still the same. Now, of course, there is plenty more we can add to the search engine to increase its functionality and make it way better, but we're just going to leave it here. I think this has been a bit of an exploration as to how search engines work at a very basic level. Uh, even then, if you were to take the code that I just uh, wrote here and try to add even a few thousand websites, uh, the performance would be not good at all. So let's just take this for educational purposes. And speaking of that, I do have a GitHub link in the description with all of the code, the Python script, the PHP script, and everything else that you need to go ahead and get this thing up running and for you to mess around with. Now, with that being said, I think this concludes our exploration on our DIY search engine. Thanks for watching.